Picking the best concealed carry cartridge really comes down to personal choice and what you feel comfortable carrying. But what are some of the best options out there? Dave and I are going to talk about it. Hello, friends and lovers. This is Dave Trillo, and you're listening to the Ammunition Guide podcast brought to you by none other than Ammo.com. Chris, today we're going to talk about our favorite rounds for concealed carry. And we say concealed because you don't necessarily want to broadcast the fact that you're packing heat to everyone who sees you in public. So we're looking for a good balance of power, but a uh, small size. Dave, you're absolutely right. There's a lot that goes into concealed carry to think about as far as, you know, size the firearm, size the cartridge. And if you need any of these rounds, make sure you click that link down in the description or the pinned comment. Get your free $20 off coupon from ammo.com. And while you're down there, go ahead and slam that like and subscribe button as well. Help the channel grow. Let's get more eyes here on the ammo.com YouTube channel. Really appreciate all of you for being here today. But yeah, we've got some of the top concealed carry cartridges out there. And we're going to start off with one that, you know, I'm sure that we've mentioned once or twice here on the channel before. It might be the most popular centerfire handgun cartridge in North America. And that's none other than the 9mm Luger. Yes, that one sounds familiar. Most people mm -hmm. just call it the 9mm, Europeans call it the 9 by 19 but whatever yep. you call it, you can't argue that this one is a reliable little friend to have on your hip. No, Dave, you're absolutely right, and what I like so much about the 9mm is the low recoil, which lets you shoot a smaller handgun that's a lot easier to conceal without really feeling that pain in your wrist that you know, maybe a couple other cartridges on our list might deliver to you. It's true. I mean, this is a round you can actually pack into a Derringer that's still comfortable to fire. So uh, however light your handgun is, you're probably not going to have a hard time controlling it. No, and I think that's something that's really overlooked a lot with these subcompact concealed carry pistols. It's really easy to go out to the range and take your full size. I mean, let's say let's take a 44 Magnum, for example, right? You're going to take your, you know, your Smith & Wesson out to the, the range, and it's great. It's easy to shoot, but you get that 44 in a subcompact or like a snub nose, that's going to be a painful round to shoot, whereas you take a 9mm out in a subcompact, it's not so bad. Uh, the 9mm is just a surefire bet, just by sheer virtue of its popularity. It really is, and uh, another one that was incredibly popular uh, back in the 90s, but maybe it's starting to fall out of favor a little bit, but still more than enough for concealed carry, and that is the 40 Smith & Wesson. A little bit more gun arguably more than a lot of people want to conceal carry. Well, you're not going to bring too little gun to the fight if this is the one you tuck into your waistband. That's for sure. Usually you're only sacrificing maybe one or two rounds of magazine capacity from switching from a 9mm to a 40, even in a subcompact, but you're going to add on definitely some more kinetic energy that can get a lot of work done. But my problem with the 40 is that it's really snappy when it comes to recoil, and that can be turn you know kind of off-putting for some shooters. Recoil is, is truly subjective. We can mm -hmm. sit down and calculate objective recoil energy all day, but that doesn't hide the fact that a lot of guys say they don't even notice a difference. It comes down to your musculature, your skeleton, and other stuff me and Chris couldn't measure without your permission. Yeah. Now, one, one that's a classic uh, in our list here that has, you know, been through two world wars was the U.S. service cartridge for, you know, decades. That's the 45 ACP. And again, I think we're talking about even a little bit more recoil, but uh, the neat thing about the, the 45 ACP in a subcompact is you're still getting that that big, heavy bullet, which, which even with less velocity behind it, is still going to retain the momentum it needs to penetrate to an effective depth for our self-defense. The 45 undeniably is an amazing self-defense round. You just can't get away from it. And obviously... Here in America, we just, we love our 45s. And, you know, that big, powerful, heavy bullet just slamming into the target really does a lot of work. And, you know, as far as the recoil is concerned, I would say that there's a different feeling in recoil. A lot of people describe the 45 ACP recoil as kind of rolling. Uh, it's strong, but rolling, whereas the 40 is a lot more snappy. There's a lot more pressure behind it. And so, mm -hmm. again, it comes down to personal preference on what you like. Now, one thing we definitely have to pay homage to here, especially with our Wild West roots, is, of course, the revolver. And if there's one round that's quintessential with concealed carry and a little snub nose, it's got to be the 38 Special. It's classic. You can get a great little S&W for, for pretty cheap that holds five rounds, and it's so light that you don't even notice it's in your waistband, and you 
might have guessed that I carry one. And that's exactly what you want to be when you're concealed carrying. But uh, I want to talk about plus P ammo. You know, that's really popular. Uh, what's the deal with that, Dave? Plus P ammo is loaded to a higher than standard chamber pressure. It's still standardized by Sammy. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, the manufacturer is making ammo to specs that your revolver is designed for. And it pushes the bullet to a velocity that's not insanely faster. I think you can expect like 50 feet per second faster muzzle velocity yeah. with a plus P38 special round. But that's going to add like uh, about 10 foot pounds of kinetic energy on impact, which could spell the difference between the guy continuing to attack you or, or stopping attacking you. And that's really what it's all about. If you can handle the sometimes not even noticeably stouter recoil, a plus P pound round is really worth it, especially when you're talking about a snub nose that's just naturally not going to give a bullet as much velocity to begin with. Now, I will caution, make sure that your revolver is specced out for plus P ammo. If it doesn't say so on the barrel, contact the manufacturer and just make sure or seek the services of a qualified gunsmith because the last thing we want is you putting around through your revolver that it's not designed to handle. We got to add one more caveat for uh, mm -hmm. since it's concealed carry we're talking about, get a hammerless 38 special. Moving on up the power level a little, a little bit with the revolver is the 357 Magnum. Mm -hmm. oh, much more authoritative than the 38 special. It was designed from the 38 special, but just outclasses it in all ways. You're going to get a lot more recoil, but you're going to get a lot of benefits in exchange for putting up with that. Dave, you are absolutely right. The 357 Magnum packs a wallop, especially when you're packing the quintessential self-defense round, and that is the 125 grain jacketed hollow point. That is the round that people measure other self-defense rounds by because it is just so effective getting the penetration you need, the expansion, but you really hinted at there the recoil is the big issue, especially when you're using those really light, small frame snub nose revolvers it can take a little bit of getting used to if you haven't shot that before and this is also the noisiest cartridge on our list so far mm -hmm. which is always important let's step that power level down a little bit here and let's talk about this one this is going to be the smallest cartridge that i would feel comfortable carrying and that's the 380 acp classic you know i usually mm -hmm. uh, refer to this as a as a mouse gun cartridge if it's perfect you can slip it into your pocket you can you can put it into your purse it's, it's insanely effective it relies more on aim naturally a significantly weaker bullet yeah. but again one that's been implemented for law enforcement and even military use pretty successfully over the years and that's something that i think a lot of people harp on is like the you know 380 doesn't have enough power to it oh no it does it has enough power if you can put those bullets where they need to be and this is where i think we really come down to the big point of our talk of our talk here is that you need to be able to put rounds on target accurately it doesn't matter if you're carrying a 357 magnum and you can't hit the broad side of a barn whereas if you've got a 380 acp and you can put all those rounds into a nice you know little little hole about that size uh you know that really makes a difference in a self-defense situation and to that end, other smaller cartridges like uh, the 32 ACP are, are going to serve you well. If, if, if recoil is, is giving you so much muzzle rise that it's taking you an hour to restore your aim to the target, consider getting a very low recoil uh, cartridge, especially if you're carrying a subcompact. Aim really matters more than, than pure kinetic energy in a, in a heartbeat. It definitely does, Dave. And making sure you get out to the range and being able to practice is an incredibly important skill. And if you're going to do that, you're going to need ammo. Make sure you, again, you click that link in the description down below. Get your free coupon. What's your favorite concealed carry cartridge? Let us know down in the comments. While you're there, drop us a like. We'd really appreciate it. And we'll see you out on the range.